Hey chums and welcome back to the Kenwood Kids Club coming to you from the Mr. Baker's Cakes Kitchen. I nearly forgot what it was called there. This week we are continuing our Easter countdown with yet another Easter themed recipe. If you missed last week's episode we were making some Easter cupcakes and they turned out like this if you can see those. They're basically a deliciously light and chocolatey cupcake with a double chocolate buttercream and then some Easter mini eggs on the top there as well. So again, if you missed it, do go and check it out. But this week we're going to be turning our hand to cookies once again because I know we've got some big cookie fans out there and this week we are going to be making some Easter egg cookies. What can I say? I'm a little bit obsessed with chocolate mini eggs and so I'm going to find every excuse that I can to squeeze them into a recipe over these next few weeks. If it's your first time watching one of our videos in the Kenwood Kids Club, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button. And if you head down to the video description, you'll also find a link to the Kenwood Kids Club website where you can get all signed up as a member. And of course, you can find the full ingredient list and recipe for this week's Bake Along. But I don't know about you, I'm really looking forward to tucking into some Easter cookies, so I think we'd better get started. You'll notice that I am using a sand mixer today, but as always, if you don't have one at home, don't panic. You can make these in a bowl with a wooden spoon, or of course with your hand mixer if you have one of those. The first thing that's going to go into the bowl today is some slightly salted or salted butter. We talk about this all the time, but it is really important to use salt, even in sweet recipes, because it is a flavour enhancer. So it's not just about making things salty, it's about bringing out the flavours of all the other ingredients too. An easy way to do it in a dessert recipe like this is to just use slightly salted or salted butter, and then that way you don't have to worry about adding salt in yourself. If you only have unsalted butter, just take a little pinch of regular table salt, throw it in and it will do the same job. In with my butter today, I'm actually adding two different types of sugar. I've got some golden caster sugar, and then I've got some soft dark brown sugar as well. I'm gonna pop the golden caster sugar in first, and then I'm going to tell you why I'm using the d soft dark brown sugar. This has got a really kind of strong, almost treacly flavor to it. And when you use it in cookies, it just makes them taste so much more Delicious, for want of a better word. It's got a deeper flavour to it, and, it, and it's just mm, really yummy. Give it a try, and I'm sure you'll agree. And then with those ingredients in there, I'm just going to add the paddle attachment, or the creaming attachment if you have one, to my sand mixer, and I'm going to turn it on and mix until everything is nice and smooth and combined. Once everything is looking nice and smooth and combined, then I'm going to go in with one large egg. I'm just going to literally go straight into the bowl. And then I'm going to mix for a little bit longer just to make sure that's nice and combined as well. Once that's all combined, we're going to go in with our dry ingredients, which for this recipe are some plain flour. That's a flour without any raising agent in it at all. And some bicarbonate of soda. Again, don't forget, you can head down to the video description to find all of the ingredient quantities, so don't panic if I'm not mentioning any of those in the video. And then I'm going to give it one more quick mix. And again, we're looking for everything to be completely combined. We don't want to see any kind of loose flour or anything hanging around. Now, once you get to this stage, this is actually a great base for any kind of cookie recipe. We've got basically the kind of the cookie part, and all we need to add in now are our fillings. Of course, today I'm making Easter egg cookies, and so I am going to be using some chocolate mini eggs. And what I've done with these is I've just popped them in a heavy duty sandwich bag or a freezer bag and give them a bit of a bash with my wooden rolling pin just to break them up slightly so they're not whole massive great big eggs. But if you don't fancy using these or you don't have any of these at home, you can use an equivalent amount of another type of chocolate and the recipe will work just fine. But as I say, I'm doing Easter cookies, so I'm going to go in with my chocolate mini eggs. Just like that. And I'm also going to throw in 
a teaspoon of vanilla extract because I think vanilla makes everything taste more delicious. So there's my vanilla, my Easter eggs, and then just one more final mix just to get those last couple of ingredients fully incorporated. Now obviously those are some quite chunky ingredients that we've added in there, the mini eggs in particular. So if you're using a hand mixer, you might want to switch to a wooden spoon just for that last bit. I'd hate for anyone to damage their mixer because they're trying to mix big solid mini eggs. But once we get to this stage, that is essentially our cookie dough done. So I'm just going to scrape off this beater to make sure I don't waste any of this delicious cookie dough. And then I'm going to take the bowl off and just whiz around with this spatula just to make sure that I haven't got any kind of pockets of butter or flour or anything lurking at the bottom. But it doesn't look like I have. Okay, it's looking pretty good to me. Now the last thing I need to do for now is divide this up into 12 equal portions. You can do that being really precise with some weighing scales if you want to, but I'll be honest, I tend to just do it just by looking. It's up to you. You want them to be the same size though, otherwise they're not going to cook at the same speed in your oven. But what you want to do is take two large baking sheets and line them with some greaseproof or baking paper. You want something that your cookie dough isn't going to stick to. I like to use an ice cream scoop to help me portion out my cookie dough and I'm just going to take kind of one decent sized scoop, hopefully that shows up on camera, and then I can use that to portion out my cookies. Now this bit does get quite messy but I think that's half the fun of baking isn't it? And I'm just going to pop this onto that grease proof sheet. Now the reason why we're using two large baking sheets is your cookies are going to spread in the oven and actually they'll spread quite big because these are a really good size cookie. So I'm going to put six on each tray and then that will give them plenty of space to spread out in the oven. So let's finish this one off and you'll see that I'm leaving lots of room between them as well because they'll spread in all directions. Once you've done one sheet, just carry on until you have filled up the second sheet with another six cookies and then they need to go into the fridge. If you put them straight in the oven now, what will happen is the cookie dough will melt too quickly and you'll end up with really, really thin, crispy cookies. What we're aiming for with this recipe is kind of more of a, a kind of a supermarket style cookie or the ones from that well-known cookie chain that you can buy, which is where they're reasonably thin but crispy around the outside and still gooey in the middle. And popping these in the fridge for about half an hour or so is going to stop them melting too quickly and give you that perfect texture. I'm going to finish portioning mine up and go and pop them in the fridge and after that I'm going to pop them straight into a preheated oven at 200 degrees C which is 180 degrees fan or gas mark 6 for around about 15 minutes. You're looking for them to have gone a kind of golden brown colour around the outside, but don't panic, when you take them out they will still look very soft. Your cookies will continue to cook on the warm tray for a good few minutes after you take them out, and then gradually you'll find they'll kind of deflate a little bit and they'll start to go solid. At that point you can then take them off the tray and pop them on a cooling rack, but hopefully if I stop talking and get mine in the fridge and then into the oven, I can show you what that will look like. So I'm obviously not going to make you wait for that. We'll jump ahead and I'll show you what my cookies look like when they come out. I'll see you in a second. So I'm, I'm actually out of breath because I rushed to get the camera back on so that you could see what they look like as soon as they come out of the oven because again, they are quite puffy, but already they've kind of deflated again to, to kind of what they end up like at the end. But anyway, there are my Easter egg cookies. You'll notice that even though I spread mine out, they are still a little bit um, touching. So I'm gonna see if I can slide them apart. Now they are very soft. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but look how soft they are if I push kind of but what will happen, as I say, as they cool down, they will start to kind of go a bit more solid. And then, oh no, I'm breaking one. And then, once they've cooled down completely, we'll have that gorgeous kind of crispy outside bit. 
and then that really kind of soft and chewy bit in the middle with of course those little pockets of chocolate courtesy of the Easter eggs as well. They smell so, so amazing and I really wish you could smell what I can smell but of course you'll just have to go and make some for yourself so that you can obviously smell them but also more importantly give them a taste. Now because they are fresh out of the oven, they are in fact still too hot to transfer onto the cooling rack but I really did want you to see kind of just how soft they look when they come out because it can be really tempting to think they're not fully baked and leave them in for a bit longer but you definitely don't need to as you saw there. They are really really soft and then they start to kind of become a bit more solid as they cool down. Because they're too hot to move, they're also too hot to taste. So I think this is like the third recipe in a row that I haven't been able to taste one in the video. And um, as we all know, that is my favorite part of every video. So I'm quite sad about that. But rest assured, I will be eating some of these myself. But just like last week's cupcakes, if you do whip up a batch of these, they make a fantastic Easter gift for your friends and family as well. And in fact, I made a whole huge batch of these to take into school this week to share with the other teachers and they really love them. So hopefully your friends and family will too. Of course, if you do have a go at my Easter egg cookie recipe, don't forget to take a photo of your cookies and share it with us over on the Kenwood Kids Club website. Not only do I love to see what you're baking at home, but also you may well get entered into our Star Baker of the Month competition for April. Yes, we are into a new month, which means it is a whole new chance for you to win our Star Baker of the Month competition, scooping yourself your very own Kenwood Kids Club goodie bag and your own Kenwood hand mixer as well, which is an amazing prize. If you're not already a member of the Kenwood Kids Club, then all you have to do is head down to the video description, click on the link and that will take you straight there. And then you just need to sign up with your adults at home's permission, of course, and you'll even receive your very own membership card as well. And as I said at the start of the video, if you're not already subscribed to us here on YouTube, you can do that right now by clicking on that great big red subscribe button down there on the right. Please also do give this video a thumbs up to show me that you are there and that you have enjoyed it. And don't forget to tune in at the same time next week when another one of our amazing junior ambassadors, yes, we have a whole team of them now, will be joining me to cook up a fantastic Easter recipe of their own. I'll be back again the week after that with another fun and easy recipe for you to try at home. But until then, as always, do take care and happy baking. Bye everyone. Oh, P.S. just before I go, just while I've been talking, can you see they're already starting to stiffen up? So, trust me, take them out while they're still soft and they will be perfect. But anyway, that's me done. I'll see you next time.